Big news yesterday, if you want to call it big, typical, deceptive, meaningless. The president of Harvard was forced to resign over not making statements supportive of students that are being persecuted in an anti-Semitic way at Harvard. Of course, this is not the only time that Harvard has shown its discriminatory past. They discriminated against Asian Americans, not allowing them to come in in the sufficient numbers based upon their ability, but in fact, excluding them uh, to the detriment of Asians and in the favor of Blacks and others that they would bring in under affirmative action. Harvard is a despicable, dishonest university, no longer has standing as a great university. Perhaps if it moved to Beijing, China, or Moscow, or perhaps Caracas, Venezuela, or Havana, maybe it would be better disposed to carry out its socialist, communist, atheist ideology. But what is really unbelievable is that this president, Claudine Gay, was allowed to keep her salary as president of Harvard. She makes almost a million dollars a year, writes almost nothing, and what she did write was riddled with plagiarism. This tells you something about our higher institutions and the Ivy League. As you know, we now have an anti-Ivy League task force. We'll be doing whatever we can to bring lawsuits against them for students that were discriminated, not just Jewish students, but anyone, Asian students, others who have been caught in their web of deceit and discrimination. And we will take them down. Stay tuned, we will take them down at any other university, not just Ivy League or any other institution, period. Uh, in many ways, I'm a civil rights lawyer and we're gonna see the civil rights lawyer enforcing things in reverse because it's turned around in this country is that the majority no longer has a voice uh, and even minorities don't have a voice. People do what they want. They're a lot like federal judges at these institutions. They think they're above the law. They're not gonna be above the law much longer. Talk about federal judges. Amin Mehta of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, not different than any of the other judges in that court, frankly. I don't care, care whether you've been appointed by Clinton, Obama, George W. Bush, uh, now, of course, Trump. Uh, they're all in the same boat. They're all establishment hacks, frankly. And yesterday, Mehta made a ruling in a case that was brought against President Trump a conspiracy case where he was tied to, frankly, a, a peaceful protester uh, on Capitol Hill at January 6th, that a case will go forward as part of a conspiracy that Trump contributed to a Capitol policeman who had a stroke after that event. Uh, it, it wasn't really caused by the event, but of course they're trying to nail him that way. And Maida just ruled that simply pleading that in a complaint is enough to proceed and that President Trump has no immunity. Based upon a ruling by the higher court of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, equally as dishonest and corrupt and compromised, that Trump has no immunity. This issue is now in front of the Supreme Court, but Meta allowed it to proceed. That's not the first time that something like this has happened. And what's really incredible is that Trump having no immunity, and then based on a pleading, uh, being held accountable for the death uh, that was not caused through violence, but caused through a stroke of a Capitol policeman uh, is completely contrary to a case that I brought years ago against Hillary Clinton, when in fact she was using a private email server outside of the scope of her authority. Trump was working within his authority as president when he made comments about January 6th, but Hillary was not. And that gave rise to terrorists finding Ambassador Christopher Stevens and my client's two sons who were with him, Ty Woods and Sean Smith, in which case they got killed. Hillary's use of a private email server, which was not sanctioned by the government, gave rise to terrorists finding uh, through intelligence, the location of Ambassador Christopher Stevens and Sean Smith and Ty Woods leading to their death. I brought a lawsuit for wrongful death against Hillary Clinton, which is based on negligence, it can, and also for defamation, because she defamed the parents of Ty Woods and Sean Smith and called them liars about what occurred at Benghazi. That was dismissed by the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, went up on appeal uh, to two leftist judges, affirmed, I'm now going to be going back and saying, look, this is at odds with your decision with regard to Trump. Treat my clients fairly, even though my clients are conservatives. 
and they've stood there for their sons and reverse that earlier decision now that you have made a presidential ruling, DC Circuit. But this is how it works. If you're a conservative, a person of faith, a libertarian, you'll get the shaft more often than not. If you're a leftist these days or part of the establishment, you won't. Meta was appointed by Barack Obama. He is a hack. Uh, he has put a number of January 6th peaceful protesters in prison. Uh, he sat over the trial of the Proud Boys and I also believe the Oath Keepers. And of course, they got decades, some of them, uh, and they didn't really lift a hand uh, at violence. So this is where we are, as I say always. Our legal system is the most corrupt system in this country. The legal profession is the most corrupt, unfortunately. I founded Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch because I believe in it because I'm trying to restore ethics and integrity to it. Uh, but instead, you know, bar associations go against me. They go against uh, others like Kellyanne Conway, like former Attorney General Bill Barr, like Senators Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley, like Professor John Eastman, Rudy Giuliani, anybody that supported President Trump in the last election uh, will be subject to retaliation. And of course, you see what had happened here, Trump himself, is now being tried for conspiracy to kill the Capitol cop who had a stroke, who died on his own after January 6th. Tells you everything about this country. We live in a dictatorship. There is no legal system in the federal uh, system that will stand up for people who believe in the vision and creation of our founding fathers. And that is why you must now join Freedom Watch because we are your justice department. We've created our own people's justice system. We've tried uh, Obama, excuse me, Biden, Freudian slip for bribery from communist China, Ukraine, Russia, negligent homicide, also Fauci. They both were sentenced, uh, Biden to 20 years, Fauci to life imprisonment for what he did with COVID-19. And it's time for you to join Freedom Watch and become part of the solution, not part of the problem. We need to take matters into our own peaceful and legal hands. So we're back from the holiday. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a great New Year, a great Christmas, but now's the time to get to work. Go to freedomwatchusa.org, sign up for our Justice League, contribute to our cause with tax-deductible contributions. We are your real Justice Department. God bless you. Remember, the Father and Son will only help us if we help ourselves. I'll be back tomorrow with another special podcast. Thank you for listening to me.